Sudha Pichai, the CEO of Google, said, AI is more profound than fire or electricity for human society. Now is the time that I would like to introduce our uh, technical expert for the day. So I take this privilege to introduce to you Mr. Paulson, who is the CEO of iEnergetics, an energy analytics uh, platform based on AI and ML. His vision is to convert the global energy usage to an efficient and conserved model to reduce the greenhouse gas emission. He is a certified leader in sustainable finance from Cambridge University. He has 27 years of IT industry experience with a passion for AI and ML. Energy is the biggest contributor uh, to uh, the greenhouse uh, emission and the sole reason for climate change. It has motivated Mr. Paulson to work on this industry and help the world combat global warming and to help the businesses cut energy expenses. With this, uh, kindly brief us more about your vision and how do you plan to do it. Over to you. Thank you so much, Shada. I'm really delighted to be here. Thank you so much for this opportunity, uh, Mr. Raj and Mr. Shada. What is your understanding on the contribution of AI and ML in energy management and sustainability? Artificial intelligence is changing the world slowly. But the reality is, Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, said AI is more profound than fire or electricity for human society. Are we really using the power of AI in energy sector? Today, the the energy industry, or rather the AI, is transforming the way we live, we socialize, we travel, we do business. But we are not using or exploring the full potential of AI in our energy industry. Before we go in and detail about how it can help, let's briefly see how energy sector is impacting climate change. So I'm sure you all have seen this. Our world in data shows the greenhouse gas emission the sector, which is 73.2% coming from energy industry. That means we all in this industry are responsible for global climate change issue. Unless each and every one of us take responsibility and do our part, we cannot save this world from energy or climate change issues. You may say, you know, I'm not in the right power or I don't have the capability to do these changes. Or rather, you may be right in that case. But if you say that, you know, I can start from where I am today, I can start with my circle of influences, or I can start with my client. If you are in that category, there's good news, because I'm going to help you today and throughout your journey with the right tools and techniques. So you can always reach out to me in my LinkedIn or directly in my mobile phone. I'll be happy to assist you. Today, we'll talk about how we in the energy industry can help in the climate change issues. So Thomas Alva Edison said in 1910 that uh, we should use the renewable sources like wind and solar. It has been 110 years past, right? We've, we literally burned 40% of the world's oil reserve, but still we are nowhere near transforming ourselves. Can AI save this world from this consumption of global greenhouse emission? Let's see that. Before that, I would like to bring everyone on the same page because people have different opinion about artificial intelligence. So machine learning and deep learning is just a subset of AI, which is just a top level program. Deep le learning is basically a multi-layered neural networks, which allows to learn the data from the vast amount of data available in the world. So in the energy sector, there are several ways we can use AI. So today I'm going to talk more about energy management because in my opinion, that's where AI can really give its full potential. In addition to that, of course, we can use it in power grid, we can use it in virtual power plant because today we're talking about decentralized renewable energy power plant throughout the world or through, throughout the country. And we can also obviously use it in energy trading where algorithmic trading comes in and monitoring of the trading comes in where AI can really do a magic. Let's do a little bit more where AI can use, uh, which use cases in energy management can be useful. So when we talk about energy consumption, whether it's a factory or school or colleges or even factories, so the insights of the energy data can be used in 10 different use cases. So today I'll talk the top four of them in detail so you'll understand more about how it really works, right? Let's talk about the first one, staff behavioral change. So in every organization, they have something called passive match. They put a sticker under the electrical appliances which says switch off the you know, appliances which is not in use. 
But do people really take action? Nobody knows because nobody monitors them, right? With a platform like AI, you can change the sticker and put an active nudging sticker like you have been watched. That means after a month or even six months, you can pull the report and ask the particular staff and say, why you didn't switch off this missionary on this day at this time? Because now you have the data collected throughout the months and years, right? That level of control we can give them by creating an active nudge. So when the customer or the staff knows that they have been monitored, so whatever mistake or effort they're doing, it will be revealed to them, you know, at any point of time to the management, they will be more and more, you know, their, their behavior will change automatically. That will transform directly into energy costs and of course, the power consumption through the fossil fuel. The second is data-driven decision. So today, any organization, you know, when they take a decision to change the light bulb into LED bulbs or changing the motor into more saving, they take it based on, you know, little in information. But when you look at the data-driven decision, we need a lot of data. Right? When we pump in a lot of data to AI, AI do all kinds of insights. With that insights, if you take action, those ins actions can really be fruitful and it will produce it as a huge cost saving for our customers. Right? So that's where the AI comes in. We need to collect, of course, today, the only data we collect in the customer side is the monthly data, right? how much energy they consume and how much cost they are paying. We can change that. We can collect hundreds and thousands of data points through IoT devices and smart meters. That can give them a lot of insights to take right action. The third one is control. Right? Today, as a owner of the factory, you know, or as a manager who's out taking care of the operations, people don't have a control on what's happening unless they sit in their offices or in the manufacturing plant. So with AI, you can able to complete the scenario of last four weeks data and benchmark it, the moment it deviates, you can get alerts. You can see what's exactly happening at this moment. You know, is it in line with last four weeks of data or is it deviating? When it's deviating, it means something seriously wrong in the factory. Either the power fa the factory is down with the power or it's consuming more than the usual. Right? In either case, the damage is happening. The moment the owner or the manager knows it, you can able to stop as it happens. That gives a control back to the management, right? That's one of the biggest use cases using AI. The other opportunity is combating climate change, right? Today, most of the uh, electricity is still coming through the fossil fuel. And the fossil fuel is emitting CO2, as we all know, and every country is different. In India, it's 0.94 factor. That means like, Every kg of CO2 per hour is emitting 0.94 percentage of CO2. That shows, you know, this is a sample use case of how much of CO2 a particular factory or a office premises is emitting throughout the day in a 24 hours and in a monthly fashion. So by knowing that, we can able to act to reduce the energy consumption. So in terms, we can also reduce the CO2 emission in that particular factory. The moment we come down, reduce the usage, we don't need to go for a bigger factory for renewable energy. Right? Instead of two megawatts in a renewable energy factory, you only need probably 1.5 megawatts of renewable energy factory. Right? So that kind of changes we can do and contribute to our customers. So the benefits to the business are obviously huge. You know? In terms of energy, energy cost reduction, taking the complete control by looking at wide rate data points, so changing the staff behavior, these are all the real benefits to the businesses on the table. So people often ask me, so what is the return of investment? So if I put AI in my organization, what am I getting going to get? How much it costs and how much ROI you get? So I ask them the same question, right? So when you buy a fitness watch, are you getting the fitness? Right? When you go and take your medical health checkup, are you getting the health? In either cases, you're not getting fitness or health, you're only getting the data points. Right, but, but these data points are really, really useful because without them, there is no way to find out why you are at your journey in health and in fitness. The moment you know that you, know, you have certain symptoms in your blood, you've been able to consult a doctor and take a remediation. That's exactly what happens in the energy industry also. When you have the right data, you can able to use those insights to bring down your energy costs. That's the return of investment you're going to get. 
So of course, ROI depends on your energy consumption, on the current state of your organization. But definitely, rest assured, there is a huge potential which is left to be unopened or reduce the cost. So these are some of the opportunity, right? Regression algorithms in machine learning shows anomalies you know, between the mean and uh, the differentiator. You can able to point out clearly who are the outliers. Right? By identifying the outliers, we can able to fix it. And we can also see and ask various questions on the consumption pattern. So why at certain time it's consuming differently? And now, similarly, you can also compare between month-on-month -month data, you know, how it's consuming, why this month it's consuming more compared to the previous month. You can ask the right question to your staffs. And also you can compare uh, between the buildings, uh, between the missionaries, uh, between the organizations, or their uh, retail outlets, which outlet is you know, consuming more power compared to the other outlets. Those questions will allow us to learn best practices from one industry or one building or from one missionary and replicate that into other retail outlets, for example. So you can also correlate with other data points like temperature or productivity data, or it can be anything, pressure points or gas consumption and water consumption in tune with other energy points. So that will tell a lot of stories. So we can also simulate the functions like today, I'm operating for 24 hours and for next two months, my workload is going to be less if I reduce my operating hours by five hours in a week or in a day, how much energy I can save? So we can able to simulate all this kind of uh, opportunities cost. So we can plan ahead, we can create a right budget for our customers or for our own operating expenses. So iEnergetics uses AI and ML to collect the data through various data points from smart meters to IoT devices, sensors, submeters, we collect various kinds of energy data. It can be water, gas, electricity, and productivity data. And we do the insight analytics. Then we send the data back to your mobile phone or to your dashboard in your computer, which you can look at it. These user-friendly reports can help you to spot the right opportunity to save your energy cost. With that, I'll hand over back to you. And I'm available in LinkedIn. You can reach out to me through our website or my phone. Happy to address in your journey to help our planet to change into user-friendly and sustainable mode.